Hey, hello, and welcome to the channel again, guys. Um, as you can see, uh, we are looking at one of the high school fleet ships today, uh, Y469. This is the HSF Harakaze 2. Uh, we already have the HSF Harakaze in-game, um, and technically you can make her look just like this version. Uh, as you can see, she's actually running the 150mm um she's she's been dubbed z harakaze um these are german uh, 150 millimeter single mount guns um as you can see quite a long quite a reasonable reload um you know they they do turn you into a bit of a different ship you can actually make the harakaze into this however this is just a fixed version there is no hull upgrades or anything like that on this version as you can see um but what makes her different to the Harakaze, besides the lack of hull options, is the fact that it does run a 5km Hydro, um, just under a 2 minute duration. Which is pretty cool actually, she's one of, she's the only um, Japanese destroyer that has Hydro. Um, something that comes from her kind of cross-matching by taking the German guns and things like that. Um, so. The ship is based loosely around the Kagero. Um, as you can see, because it's an anime, um, the anime ship, they do go, they do tell you a little bit about it. Um, so what it appears happened was the original Harakaze was sunk, they salvaged parts of it, and ta -da, they made the Harakaze too. Sounds interesting, I've not seen it myself. In-game though, we have this uh, interesting little Tier 8 Premium Destroyer, uh, occasionally for sale, um, it was just been recently uh, released for sale, um, I don't know whether she's still available, you have to have a check in the Premium Shop, she wasn't expensive per se, which was quite nice, um, but she's a Kagero style, so as you can see you have these wonderful quad torpedo tubes, um, with six with two, two by 4 610mm, 10km, 70 knot torpedoes, Pretty quick and pretty nice, and they do pack a very nice punch with 20k of damage per top max. Couple that with the ship's concealment in spec of 5.4, um, achieved by running, as you can see, concealment on the captain and concealment on the ship, plus ammos and things like that. Um, she is pretty interesting. A uh, couple of nice little features, such as these uh, little what look like either stonars or ships that or a, or a little craft that can be deployed and um, some nice little design details on the actual ship herself um, for people to have a look at and investigate and see what's going on a rather simple camo design as well with a simple red line going down to keel and popping back up and then with the uh, Yosaka school uh, emblem on the turrets there um, other than that Pretty much what you expect from Japanese destroyer gameplay on the Shimakaze line. Very stealthy, you know, hiding around, skirting around, making the use of the concealment. Um, the guns do actually make her quite a viable gunfighting ship as well. But as you can see, you've only got three single mounted turrets. Um, something you'd be used to around about the Mitsuki, the Minakaze and things like that. But at tier 8, you kind of do feel a little bit undergunned. But, you know, you can cope with it and she does do reasonable damage with those guns. Um, and they do reload quicker than the, than you would normally expect with uh, on the on the D, D, on the destroyer torpedo line for the Japanese ships. In terms of build and setup, um, as you saw before, we are running some other. We are running the main arm mod one, the damage control system mod one. I've gone with the aiming system mod one to kind of balance to give me a bit of help for the torpedoes and a bit of help for the guns without compromising both too much. Um, we're running engine boost uh, mod one and then we're running the steel one expert of course. Um, we have four smoke screens, four speed boosts and the four hydros as well. Our captain build uh, is just a a spare captain I had knocking about that was in a battleship, so I skilled it here. As you can see, I've, the, I've stacked my torpedo skills. I've gone with the consumable enhancement to give longer lasting speed boost, longer lasting smoke, longer lasting hydro. And then pretty much the bog standard destroyer build of preventative maintenance last stand, survivability expert, 
superintendent and concealment and that's pretty much my bog standard go to destroy a torpedo build at the minute um there is no history on this ship obviously because it is a kagero class um it's because it's based on the kagero and it's a and it's from the high school fleet However, um, as soon as I get something worthy for the actual Kagero herself, I will be doing a bit of a video on that for you as well. Um, don't hold me to when. We will do as soon as we can do. Anyway, um, hopefully you're going to enjoy the replay uh, that we have coming up. It was a pretty good game. We did pretty well. Um, so enjoy, and I will see you all very soon, guys. Thanks very much. Hello guys and welcome. Uh, so we are here in the re in the battle replay for you. Uh, as you see, we are in division with the one and only Grumbles the Dwarf in his Asashio. We are in the Hadakazi 2. Um, it's a very tier, it's a tier 9 game, um, so a little bit of a stretch for the old for the old Hadakazi 2. Um, but as you can see, we've got a reasonable torpedo reload. We are on the hotspot map. So let's have a look how this one plays out. Um, it's a domination game with four cap. Um, so let's uh, let's have a let's have a let's have a bit of a, a bit of a look around and see what we can see. As you can see, we've got ten kilometer tops, eleven point four kilometers around the main battery guns, uh, five point four kilometer detectability with a five kilometer hydro. Um, does make that a very nice utility on this ship. Um, something that we can make use of in later game as well. Um, we've got the super firing uh, second turret there on the stern. Uh, with the single firing turret at the front. So just three guns but they are 150mm. Uh, in very interesting looking turret designs we'll say. Um, you know, they are what they are. They're, uh, they're okay. So we're just going to uh, take our time. Push up into the middle area here. We're looking to give eyes for the team. But as you can see, we don't have a huge amount of spotting range. We're barely seeing into the B cap at the minute. Uh, and there are four of the destroyers. Uh, a ZF-6, a Udachi on our team. Uh, and on the opposite team, we have a Mogador, an o a pair of Olans, and a Z-39 as well. Z-39 is not to be trifled with. It has a 5.5km hydro. It does last a bit longer. Same 150mm guns as we pack, although it does have a double turret at the front and two singles at the rear, so slightly at uh, one extra barrel uh, over ourselves. We're coming in on the side here of the A cap. Um, it's a position I've seen quite a few people start to uh, start to use because, as you can see, the Oland is there in that little nook just inside the A cap. Uh, and what, I've, what I'm starting to see personally myself is that this is actually a more safe way of being able to counter um, the opposition capping uh, the A cap or blocking it from this side because you can just fire the torpedoes across from here into that and as you can see because of the detectability on the ship you don't often get spotted. We've got a buffalo there on the back uh, he's taking a bit of a whack so he's uh, he's retreating back to get his heel on. We've got a pop to the corner here. Um, I was thinking about going for the B cap because you know, I'm pretty far forward, I've not been spotted, I've not seen anything in the middle to cause me any undue nervousness. Um, but then we do spot this Leon. Um, and it's a case of nope, I'm gonna hang a I'm gonna hang a right clive. Uh, let's drop the torpedoes. So we send the torpedoes on the way. This Leon does cause us a bit of a few issues because uh, we leave our aim on him for far too long. Uh, and the minute we take it off, he does the correct thing. He takes some avoiding action. Um, so, you know, fair play to him. Um, we think we've got good torpedoes, but, you know, he makes a slight course alteration, which makes a bit of a difference. Uh, and he does speed up a little bit as well. So we're hoping we're going to get a couple. We're still hoping. We're watching. We get a couple of tops and a flood. 33k is a really healthy chunk of damage though. But that's you know like 16k average damage. No flood. He does he does extinguish the flood straight away. We've got 50 seconds to wait for the reload. So we're just gonna hold our nerve. The buffalo is still behind us and well within hydro range. So we do have to pay very close attention to this. 
as you can see, we quite pushed up as well uh, for our for for this. We're just you know we, we're literally stalking this poor little Leon. Um, he knows he's being targeted because obviously when we target, you can see I keep. I keep locking him and unlocking him. That's just, you know, he's being locked, he's being unlocked, he's being locked, he's being unlocked. Uh, we're in we're in the zoom at the minute. So, you know, we're aiming. We got six seconds to wait for the reload. He's started to slow down, so we pre-aim a bit further back. Rumbles gets first blood there by taking out the Oland with his guns. I then change my target to the uh, to the buffalo. And then have a look around for other targets. Now there is an Ibuki on the inside of this cap. Got some more tops now heading towards the uh, the opposite the Buffalo and the Carlucci there. Luckily there's only a Mogador on the other side at the minute. There's a ZF6 in this cap here. Oh, sorry, the Z39 is in this cap with the Ibuki. Um, but as you see, most of the team is on the outside of the Bravo cap. And there is an Ibuki. Um, I pop the Hydro and we just get a brief look at the Ibuki there. He's right on the edge of the 5 kilometer range. We keep pulling forward. And we lay our smoke here. Uh, as soon as we spot him, we get detected. I pull the trigger. And we look to get a couple of uh, resets there. So we get three in total. Uh, we fire again. Another reset. Uh, we're, now, we're now loading HE. Uh, we're looking for shots over here. We get a torpedo strike on something behind us. Smoke screen set. Uh, and as you can see, because the opposition team has lemminged over onto this side of the map, the rest of our team is now playing catch up massively in order to come and uh, come and help over here. Shots out to the Z39, but he is smoking. He's not calling anybody's hydro or anything like that. So we're kind of hoping we hit him. We're getting the odd shell here or there, but nothing major. You know, the odd one here or there, it's enough to keep the cap reset and therefore you know, doing our job. We're up to 63,000 damage as you can see with 50, 32 seconds left on our smoke. And we have another pop over towards that. We're now spotted because we're out of the smoke. There's a Mogador pushing in behind us. So we quickly dive into the smokes, drop the detection, apply our speed boost, and we're going to take a bit of a run at the Ibuki here. Uh, the Yadashi launches his torpedoes. He has 15 kilometer torpedoes, so I'm hoping he's aiming for a different target. I've reloaded the AP because the 150 mils, as you can do, as you can see, we do 1600 damage to the Ibuki there in penetration. Oland has taken out our Sebechi Soyuz, which means the Oland is also somewhere around here. It's a bit more of a dangerous opponent, especially when you've got a slow reload like the uh, like Harakazi 2 has. So we keep pushing forward. We're now we're now we're now detected by the Ibuki proxied. The Z39 is actually stationary in there, but we do get a ricochet because of the angles. So we need to reload the HE. HE is loaded, 1650 damage. we we'll just wait for the reload again. He's on fire. One more set of shells. And that's him out of the game. That's, uh, that's, a, that's a nice removal from the game. The Ibuki is still afloat though. So we do have to be careful of that. As I'm recording this, I've just got a follow on the channel, so I do apologize. <laughs> um, pro strats here, I should have switched off that. Um, I am going to be fixing that and doing a proper um, a proper recording setup um, at some point in the... Uh, at some point um, over the week for the other videos I'm going to do, so... Sorry for that popping up. I'm gonna leave it in. Uh, I could edit. I could edit it out in the uh, replay, but I'm not going to. Uh, so we're right up close and personal. Torpedoes into there. We hit the smoke. We hit the brakes. Oh, we just managed to stop short, but we do take a fire. 
Minnesota is pushing in. The Yuzimo is staying put, so we're backing up. So we're getting shots into his superstructure there. Our smoke screen is set. We're pushing our hydro. We're backed into the Ibuki shells. We're getting ricochet, so we switch to HE. We're going to try and burn this guy down. There we go. We've got a fire on him. We're capping the base as well, right in front of these guys. Uh, the only one that I'm really worried about is the buffalo pushing in. Um, quite interestingly, this buffalo never, ever, ever, never, ever has hydroed or radared us. Um, so I don't quite know what's going on there. I'm constantly worried about the Ultimo pushing in, but the buffalo is the primary concern for me at this present minute. So we've got some tops going out for the buffalo. The torpedo warning comes up behind us. The buffalo is still coming in. His shots have gone out, so I don't think he's paying attention. Uh, it looks like we are going to get the kill on the buffalo there. We're just one on his bow. But that's all we need. I'm in quite a difficult position here because I'm well within spotting range of all of these battleships. Um... You know, and my smoke is my smoke is going to take ages to come back up. We're up to 112k though, um, so we're doing pretty good in terms of that. Okay, so we're now be we now actually being detected by the Uzima. Tops in the water, boost on to try and get away. We'll we open up with the shell with the guns. We're trying to sneak away. Our torpedoes are still going in. Are we going to catch any more? There we go. We've got another torpedo with a flood. It's up to 127. Unfortunately, we're going to run out of luck, though, very, very quickly. We're trying to get around the islands, but... There we go, so the yields are So 128k with 58 spotted. We're going to go to the post-game stats and uh, take a look at that for you just now. So... See you in the see you in the see you in the summary guys. So there we go. Uh, as you just saw in those post game statistics, seven hundred and fifty nine thousand credits, five hundred ten thousand nine hundred ninety nine XP with two thousand three hundred thirty eight free XP. Uh, a total of 128,172 damage dealt to the opposition. 33 gun hits, 7 torpedoes, 3 incapacitations, 3 destroyed, 2 fires, 6 floods in total, 4 defended with a capture and 3 spotted. Overall, a pretty nice rounding game. Harakazi 2 is a bit of a, a, bit of a, a misnomer amongst these ships at the minute. She is about, um, and you will see her here and there. Um, but don't expect to see her that often. Um, she'll probably pop up to sale, pop up for sale as and when they actually do um, some of the uh, sort of you know special events with the Lane and with high school fleet and things like that, which do seem to be coming along more and more often. Um, overall, overall impressions of the ship is if you did, if you were lucky enough to pick her up and you haven't played her yet. Give her a go, she actually fits in really nicely. Um, smoke coupled with a decent range of a hydro and very punchy guns. Um, all a bit, only three of them, but still pretty punchy. It does make for a very interesting ship to play. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this replay. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this video. It's a bit shorter than normal. Um, if you haven't already and you've made it this far, please drop us a comment, say what you thought of the video, give us any feedback. If you haven't already, uh, the subscribe button is somewhere and if you want to ring the bell and give it a thumbs up as well i'd really appreciate that i am going to do a uh, i'm going to work before my next video next week on a proper setup uh, for youtube in terms of you know the overlays and scenes and everything like that but if you have enjoyed it thank you very much guys have a great evening uh post game stats and the other streams will be coming after this for you to have a closer look at of course uh, and i'll see you on the next video cheers everybody